Hello, welcome to the Monday, March 8th, 2021 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Let's start with an update on the Microsoft Exchange vulnerability, the part that I think has not really been made very clear is that uh, before the patch was released, the group that started with some of these target exploits apparently did a scan off the internet and exploited all exchange servers that they were able to find in the couple days before Microsoft was able to release a patch. So what this means is that first of all, there are tens of thousands of uh, exploited exchange servers out there that has also been confirmed by traffic observed to some of the command control servers. And if you have a exchange server that was exposed to the internet, chances are it got exploited. So one of the things you definitely should do today, even if you already patched, if you already checked, double check, make sure that your exchange server has not been compromised. Microsoft published a PowerShell script to help with this. Also the NCC group published a list with known good hashes for exchange servers with different patch levels. So uh, that's really helpful to sort of find all the different binaries that may have been left behind that are not listed in in these common indicators of compromise lists that you may have found. And then please double check that the patch actually got applied. Apparently in particular, if you're using user account control on your exchange server, it's very important that you uh, do run uh, the patch as administrator. If you apply it manually, if you don't run it as administrator, and if you're using user account control, then the patch appears to apply, but it does not correctly update all the files. So you may still remain vulnerable. So this should be an absolute priority for you uh, today and uh, definitely double check this even if you're already patched. If you aren't patched, uh, you're pretty much definitely exploited this time if the exchange server was exposed to the internet. The exploits, lots of details have been made public. So at this point, it should be relatively straightforward for an attacker to take advantage of these vulnerabilities. Now, one question that came up is why didn't we go to Infocon Yellow? In hindsight, we probably should have gone to Infocon Yellow on Wednesday. What wasn't clear back then is how widespread exploitation was. And at that point, it really looked more like a more target exploit with exploits not being made available very quickly. So it would have given us a little bit more time to actually do the patching. Well, uh, later we found out on Thursday, Friday, really, uh, that uh, this was much more widespread than we originally thought. In the show notes, you'll find three links, uh, one for Microsoft's GitHub with the test tool, one for NCC groups GitHub with the hashes, and then the knowledge base article describing why the patch sometimes doesn't apply correctly. And the thread we have talked about multiple times in the past is XL4 macros or XLM macros. Uh, now, uh, these are really older macros, not as capable as some of the more modern uh, visual basic macros that you have in Excel. But up until now, uh, Microsoft's anti-malware scan interface uh, did not really have any hooks uh, for XLM macros. That's now going to change. Microsoft is adding these hooks uh, to AMSI and that should make it easier for antivirus solutions to actually scan this macros in particular at a runtime. And according to Microsoft, administrators can now use the existing Microsoft 365 applications policy control to configure when both XLM and VBA macros are scanned at runtime via AMSI. So the big part here is also that the scanning happens at runtime, which often is more telling for some of these behavioral algorithms than just the static scanning of the file itself. Well, in recent updates uh, to iOS, macOS, and watchOS, Apple introduced a new protocol that assists users in finding devices that are not connected to the 
internet. And the idea here is that these devices will send out Bluetooth beacons that other Apple device users can pick up. And these uh, beacons can then be used uh, to find lost devices. Apple in its uh, press release and such stated that the protocol does take privacy into account, but the protocol itself is closed and hasn't really been uh, disclosed by Apple. A recent research paper uh, does uh, reverse engineer this protocol and does point out to privacy issues with this protocol. In my opinion, nothing really overly severe. And one of these issues has already been fixed by Apple. So essentially, without going into too much detail, the keys being used to create those beacons are regularly uh, altered actually every 15 minutes. And uh, that prevents a lot of these uh, sort of attacks that would be used uh, to trace a particular user. But of course, uh, these uh, keys are saved on the user's device. And in particular on Mac OS, uh, malware could potentially read those keys. But then again, malware having that kind of access probably could also do keystroke logging and the like. But Apple did add additional controls around the storage location to make it more difficult to access for malware, even if the malware is not sandboxed. The second issue has not been fixed yet, and that's simply that any user reporting beacons to Apple or a user requesting locations from Apple for the devices, well, uh, those users are authenticated by Apple, so Apple would be able uh, to identify these users that issue has not been fixed and uh, actually not really sure how uh, they would fix it uh, because after all if i'm asking for the location of my devices apple has to authenticate me and knows who i am the entire research paper is quite detailed so if you want to know how apple pulled it off uh, to sort of have an anonymized crowdsourced uh, network to help you find your devices. Uh, take a look at the paper and the link is in the show notes. Well, that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.